This video is sponsored by Blinkist. Go to Blinkist.com slash The Plain Bagel to get a week for free, plus 25% off a full year subscription. <laughs> hey, if it isn't Mr. Oh, I'm too responsible to speculate on cryptocurrencies guy. Remember that crypto token you thought about buying last year, but then put off the decision? Flip Wallet or Chip Coin or whatever? Well, it just hit an all-time new high. Looks like someone's missing their ticket to the gravy train. <laughs> oh yeah, and remember that electric car company that you thought about buying, but then the price went up, you didn't want to pay too much for it? Well, guess what? It's headed right higher. So what are you waiting for? Come on the bandwagon. There's plenty of room. You can squeeze in right beside Craig. Wait, 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 guys. Don't listen to any of that nonsense. Sure, invest in FOMO sucks. But while it might seem like a good idea to get into something now before you miss out again, it could very well be one of the worst things you could possibly do in investments. When you make a decision based on what you see others doing, you have behavioral biases working against you. And chances are you'll do something that isn't in your best interest. So let's go over what's causing that investment FOMO and how to deal with it on today's Plain Bagel. Fear of missing out, as I'm sure you know, is usually used to describe that social anxiety that comes with thinking others are having fun without you. It's a feeling that's become more prevalent in the era of social media, with people constantly being updated on the polished, edited version of what others are doing. And while it probably doesn't sound like something that would normally apply to the world of investing, investment FOMO is a very real thing. We've all seen Reddit posts, YouTube comments, or news articles discussing how much money other people have made off of certain investment picks. From stories of young millionaires becoming rich overnight with a Bitcoin investment, to people cheerleading their own stock picks in the comments section of my own videos. It doesn't help either that investing is often treated as a competition, so it's easy enough to find people belittling one another for refusing to hold certain positions, with others sensationalizing investment opportunities as a now or never situation. These sort of posts can make you feel pretty crappy if you aren't holding the investment in question. You may deeply wish you had just pulled the trigger last month and hopped into whatever the poster is discussing rather than shine away to the sidelines for some logical reason. And in some cases, you may experience the urge to buy now, even if it's something you wouldn't normally hold. You see, investment FOMO can trigger a well-documented behavioral bias known as regret aversion, something that greatly impacts our decision-making process. Regret is, after all, a pretty painful emotion. It forms a pit in your stomach that often lingers for quite some time, which spurs us to pursue reparative actions. This is a pretty handy mechanism from an evolutionary standpoint, but within the context of investing, it tends to impair our rationality. The reason? Our investing regret is often based entirely off of the short-term fluctuations of a stock's price, rather than the long-term underlying performance of our holdings. You might own a company that's well positioned to prosper over the long term, but if the stock's price is down, you're likely to evaluate the situation as a net negative. Likewise, if a stock with poor fundamentals sees its price increase, you may view it as an attractive position that you regret not entering. But a stock's price is a fickle metric. It can fluctuate on the daily by large amounts and at times diverge from reality when the market becomes overly optimistic or pessimistic making it a pretty poor gauge of performance. That's not to say there aren't some lessons to be learned from investment-related regret. It's a pretty humbling emotion when you've been burned on a position that you went into because you had the gut feeling for it, but you didn't do enough research to support the decision. But when combined with investment FOMO, regret aversion often leads us to enter positions in complete ignorance of our standard level of risk aversion and in many cases, without fully understanding the investment in question. A conservative investor that is looking to retire next year may feel a desire to buy a promising tech startup or cryptocurrency they've heard about online, even though standard portfolio management would likely advise against it. Part of this motivation as well is the idea of safety in numbers. We can feel uneasy if we aren't holding the same positions everyone else is holding or at least talking about. And being the one person in the crowd who is missing out on a return can leave you feeling pretty low and lonely. 
So regret aversion often motivates us to look into and invest in the positions we see others promoting or discussing. Even if the positions fall and we do end up losing money, we'll at least have the reassurance that we aren't alone. But while we might feel better emotionally when we join the crowd with our investments, there are a number of reasons why giving into investment FOMO will likely leave you worse off financially. For one, online or otherwise, people often exaggerate their investment successes while rarely sharing the whole story. So relying on the skewed input to inform your decisions means you'll likely make a misguided choice. In the same way Instagram posts rarely reflect reality, people often edit and refine what they share about their investment experiences. So it's worth taking what you hear or see online about investments with a grain of salt. Some posters even have ulterior motives when discussing investments online. Outside of someone already in the position trying to convince you to boost the price higher for them, there are plenty of scams out there that use investment FOMO to their advantage. I can't count how many posts I've had to delete from my own channel, pushing Bitcoin or some other hot investment in an attempt to scam people. And all this is on top of the fact that buying something after it's experienced incredible returns is one of the biggest faux pas of the industry. Past returns do not guarantee future returns. So while someone might have made it big on a given position, that in no way means that the return will be repeated for you. In fact, from a valuation perspective, buying a stock after its price is appreciated might mean you're taking on more risk. You are, after all, spending more of your money to acquire the same investment. And it's often these positions that rise the fastest that are susceptible to dropping the quickest. So while it might seem like a good idea to buy something that has surged in price, you may be entering something that's become overvalued, especially if the demand for the stock is based on little more than investor hype. Now, all this isn't to say that a stock or investment that has done well in the past will not or can't do well in the future. There's even a style of investing based on this idea known as momentum investing that decides to pick stocks based on what has done well in the past. But the point is that you shouldn't act on the urge to buy something just because you've seen others do well with the position. It's tough enough to pick good investments when you do take the time to do proper research and due diligence. So buying a stock without knowing or understanding what the company does or how it works, or heck, whether there's debt involved or if the company is even making a profit is really just gambling and not even gambling well at that. You wouldn't buy a local business just because it's recently become the most expensive store on the street. So why do so with stocks? But of course, the point of a behavioral bias is that it interferes with our ability to think rationally. So while this might make sense now, it might be harder to apply it in the future. So next time you feel investment FOMO, I encourage you to consider the following sober check before making a decision. Firstly, ask yourself honestly whether the person you're hearing about the investment from is a reliable source. If you can't verify someone's claims or their credentials, or they don't have any credentials, then you probably don't need to worry too much about following their investment picks or their advice, especially if they don't have any liability for what they're telling you or their recommendations. Secondly, do you actually understand the investment in question? You should not buy something based on its price alone. It's important to know what it does, the debt involved, the profitability, and everything else you would want to know if you were a business owner putting their money behind a company. So if you really are considering something as an investment, do the due diligence and learn about the finances and the operations of the position. Thirdly, does the investment fit with your risk tolerance and your investment objectives? You may not be in a position where you can afford to put your money behind these high risk picks anyway. So it's important to understand your own limitations when it comes to what positions you're able to take on yourself. And sure, some investments may have the potential of being the next big thing, but so what? If you don't need that high speculative return to meet your investment objectives, retirement or otherwise, then there's not a lot of value in taking on that high speculative risk. Finally, is this investment truly a time sensitive pick? A big part of the investment FOMO urge to buy is the idea that there's a limited window of opportunity, but the best investments are those that continue to be attractive over the long term. And unless you plan on being a trader and selling after a few months, then you probably don't want to buy anything that's only a good buy for a short while anyway. 
Taking the time to go through these four questions should allow you the opportunity to better evaluate and assess the decision at hand. And if you're really feeling an urge to hop into something right away, write down your answers and come back to them later. You may notice the lapses in your judgment more easily if you have to record your justifications for the position you want to take on. At the end of the day, investor FOMO can make you feel like an idiot for missing out while others seem to be rolling in dough and throwing dollar bills around from their successful picks. But hindsight is 2020. It's impossible to know which investments will rise and fall over time, even with all the research in the world. So the best thing you can do is to base your decisions off of objective research and analysis. After all, doing the due diligence and picking an investment that ends up earning a subpar return is forgivable, but buying something just because someone else did as well and losing money as a result, well, not so much. So try to limit the influence of investment FOMO on your own portfolio decisions and try to make informed decisions when you can. And for the love of God, buy some plain bagel stock if you haven't already. It's already quadrupled in price and you have to be a rock to think that it's going anywhere but up. I would know. I have a profile picture of me in front of a car. Investment FOMO isn't really a technical term, but if it were, it would likely fall under behavioral finance or economics, a field of study that considers how things like anchoring bias and mental accounting impact our decision-making process. It's an area that I've always found fascinating. And if you're interested in learning more about the subject yourself, you can check out The Behavioral Investor and The Laws of Wealth by Daniel Crosby on Blinkist, today's sponsor. Blinkist is a book summary app that highlights the key takeaways of nonfiction books and reads them out in audio clips, making it easy to quickly learn something new. The two books I mentioned, for example, were 15 minute reads. And given that books on Blinkist are split into chapters called Blinks, it's easy to pick up and put down whenever you have the time. And their subjects aren't just limited to money and investments. Books on the platform also cover psychology, parenting, politics, technology, productivity, creativity, philosophy, you get the idea. It's a cool service I love, and if you're interested in trying it out, the first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash The Plain Bagel will get one week for free, plus 25% off the full membership fee. You can find the link in the description below and try out Blinkist yourself today.